In today's video, I'm going to talk about troubleshooting and a few best practices when working in GeoLayers 3. This is one of the exclusive tutorials that I did on my Patreon page last year, and now it's a part of my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. And if you're interested, I'll have links to the Patreon and the Masterclass down in the video description. First up is the Help menu. If you don't know about the Help menu, it's really helpful. So go up to the panel menu here, and at the bottom you see the word Help. Click on that, and then there'll be a dialog box here, and this just goes over everything, all the features of the program, all, almost all of them. Some of them it does doesn't really go into too much depth. There are a lot of uh, embedded tutorials here from the creator. You can also do a keyword search if you're, uh, you know, confused by a specific topic. Just do a keyword search. I do that. I find myself doing that quite often. One thing that I used to find really annoying is when I would launch a project in GeoLayer or just launch the GeoLayers panel, it immediately takes you to this project screen and I always have to close that. So there's actually a button at the bottom where you can deactivate that so it doesn't show every time you launch it. That may seem insignificant, but in the long run, it's gonna save you a lot of time. If you, however, wanna open this up at any time in the future, just simply go to the panel menu once again and open it up via the projects button. So you can import and you can search and download GeoData directly into your browser in the GeoLayers panel. However, if you close the project and reopen it, all of that is going to be gone. So you need to throw it into your favorite features to make sure it stays there. You can also export those out as GeoJSON files that you could then share with other people or do whatever you got to do, share it with colleagues, or if you just want to save it to your local drive in your like archived project folders. I've seen the question a few times, if you're creating a bunch of map animations, should you create a bunch of map comps, like duplicate map comps? Should you do a bunch of different projects? And I used to do a lot of different projects until I was working on a big client project where at the end during the revision rounds, the client wanted to use all the same features across those different maps. So it was a kind of a huge headache of like trying to bring that all into one project and then make sure everything was connected and it it caused a, a lot of headache and, and just a lot of time to get all that synced back up. So I've seen uh, that the best way to go about that is to create a long timeline and then use markers. So you have your one map and then you add features along that map. So if you ever need to pull a feature on that map again, you already have it there. You just need to either drag it out or re like shift it on the timeline. And I found that it, it is a very good way to work. Pinning versus parenting. When you want to connect something to your map quickly, and this is like a standalone element, not like a label template, if you want to have like an icon or just a picture or a map marker that is its own individual layer, there are two really quick ways to connect it to a map. You have pinning and you have parenting. And these are, one's not better than the other, they're just different. And you need to figure out which one works the best for your particular workflow. So I suggest trying the two different ones, figuring out which one you prefer, and then go from there. So with parenting, you can quickly parent any element to your map comp anchor, and then you can turn it to 3D and you can automatically rotate it, reposition it really quickly if you want, and then it's automatically gonna follow along with your map. However, it can be a little wonky. It's gonna automatically scale with your map zoom for one, and if you have a map pitched, and you already have a 3D element and then you parent it to that, that rotation is gonna stick. So it might not stick flat to the map, which can be a little confusing. And if at any point you turn off that 3D switch, it's going to go flat. And if you turn the 3D switch back on, it's gonna lose those 3D parameters. That can give you a big headache. So parenting always isn't the best option. Pinning on the other hand, you can take an element, you can use this little pin button here in GeoLayers, and this gives you a lot more features. You pin it, and then you set it to 3D, and then if you open up the Effect Controls panel, you'll see all these different controls. You can automatically have it scale with the map, you can have it rotate with the map, if you animate this along a path, you can have it rotate with the path. You have offset parameters, a bunch of cool little features here. Again, one I would say isn't really better than another. Parenting is much faster. Pinning is a lot more, uh, gives you a lot more customization options in certain circumstances. Sometimes you'll get 3D objects intersecting with each other. And if you didn't know um, to, to basically keep that from happening, you can just throw a 2D layer, any 2D layer between two 3D layers, and that's gonna automatically break that intersection. So one thing that you can use is an adjustment layer. So you throw an adjustment layer between there, and um, that'll take care of that. If you're ever having imagery problems, like there's tiling or some imagery is just uh, not showing up, there's a few things that you can do. 
You can go up into the map comp settings, and then at the very bottom of your map comp, you can see repair expressions and purge imagery cache. So if anything wonky is ever going on, I always hit these two buttons and then just refinalize. You can also go up to your main menu, your edit menu, and then purge the After Effects cache and purge it all and then refinalize. Sometimes when I'm jumping between two different projects, I'll open up a new project and GeoLayers will launch, but it will be showing me, like in the GeoLayers panel, it'll show me the map comp from the previous project. And all you need to do is click on the map comp and it's automatically gonna update. You may, you may need to just give it a second and then it'll load up all of the current map comps of that particular project. Again, if you have any problems with that, um, if anything starts to be a little wonky, you can go repair those expressions and purge that imagery cache and, and purge the After Effects cache. Sometimes I have all these different texture files and I'll have like noise and film grain and vignettes and stuff that makes it really hard to even play back. So what I like to do is I like to deactivate all those render intensive or what I call heavy layers. So I, I actually use a specific plugin for this called Motion 4. It allows you to group layers and then you can just select that group and automatically turn off the visibility for those. And that's what I'll do. So if I'm rendering out, if I actually need to render out and look at something, I will turn all those off for while I'm uh, animating and also while I'm rendering out like low res versions just to check out the flow of the animation. Depending on your system, trying to just watch back your map animation can be very difficult. So there's a lot of different things, small things that you can do to make this possible. The main two things really is, first of all, your resolution settings in your comp panel. So you can turn this down all the way down to quarter resolution or you can customize it as you want so that it's not always trying to load up the full frame view of that particular still frame. The preview panel is very important as well. You can go to window preview and then down under here, I almost always set it to skip five frames and then quarter resolution. And then it will at least play back. You can also set After Effects up to cache to an external hard drive. By using an external hard drive as compared to your local drive, it just makes things a bit faster. So if you go to Edit Preferences and select Media and Disk Capture, you can select your location for your cache files as well as set the maximum uh, size for that. And then over here for your conformed media as well. So to create a simple animation in GeoLayers, you can navigate around your map comp here using the left and right mouse keys here to kind of move around. You can add a keyframe and then move the playhead. And then if you move your map around again, it's gonna automatically update and add a keyframe. So you can see whatever changes you made here will add keyframes accordingly down at the bottom. Sometimes, however, the map comp will not update to fix that, you can just quickly unlink and relink the map comp view using this button. And this blue box is showing us our comp preview. And if you look down here, it shows link map comp view. So you can just click it and then click it back on. I find that I have to do that quite often um, just because sometimes it won't update. Now let's say you just wanna fly around the map and you don't wanna have it automatically animate, you can unlink map comp view and then you're gonna be able to navigate around this map quite easily and then you can do whatever you gotta do. And if you relink it, it's gonna snap it back to wherever your playhead is and that keyframe is. Sometimes it can be a little clunky trying to find geodata with the search, the keyword search. If you don't type in things specifically, they won't show up. So if you're looking for something simple, in like a country, you can just go over here and click add features to browser, download features, and then you have all of this pre-loaded geodata, these data sets that you can just automatically download. If you click on them, they'll automatically add right here to your browser. Once again, be sure to add them to your favorite features or export those features to share them or to save them to your local drive so you don't lose them next time you open up uh, After Effects. This is an error message that has plagued me plenty of times. I'm not sure what causes it. I'm pretty sure that a recent update of Adobe After Effects has made it irrelevant now. However, if you do ever encounter this, there is a way around it. One thing that causes this is when you open up After Effects via your project file. So if you click on the icon of your specific project file, you will see this error. So make sure you do not save out your project, simply close it and then launch After Effects without launching a specific project and then go open up your project via the file menu, open project. And as always, if none of this worked, you can always restart GeoLayers, restart After Effects, and restart your computer. And if none of that works, maybe you can quit and become like a TikToker or something, I don't know. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flimmy Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible.